Dr. Ed, we want to welcome uh, to the program today Brother Paul Washer. And uh, what an amazing uh, testimony, what an amazing ministry that Paul Washer has. He is based here at First Baptist Church in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. But many of you, uh, of course, as we talked about yesterday, recognize the name Paul Washer. Uh, he found, he's the founder and director of Heart Cry Missionary Society, uh, which works uh, uh, with uh, missionary efforts across the world, around the world, uh, uh, everywhere from uh, Eastern Europe, South America to the Middle East. And he's also an itinerant uh, teacher and is preaching and speaking in churches and groups all across America. But he is based here at First Baptist Muscle Shoals. And Brother Paul, thanks again for coming on this program with us. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, we're so thankful to, that you shared some of your time with us. Well, it's a privilege. I, I guess we can begin by um, uh, talking about basically about the the, uh, we asked Dr. Andy to give us some definitions about fasting, but uh, what perspective can we put on fasting from the spiritual aspect of it? Well, first of all, from Matthew 6, we realize that in Jesus' teaching, he assumed that his people would do certain acts of piety. One of them was to give to the poor in, in I think, uh, Matthew 6, 3, and then it was to pray. He said, when you pray, and then without changing course, he says, when you fast. In verse 16. So Jesus is assuming that he will have a charitable, praying, fasting people. And um, now, when we look at fasting, we have to be very, very careful. Um, an old Bible teacher by the name of um, a Brother Conrad, he, um, he told me one time that uh, walking in the truth is like walking on a razor blade. You can fall off either side. Mm. And when we come to fasting, like other crucial doctrines, there are great extremes everywhere. Sure. So we have to be very, very careful. We know about Jesus' teaching regarding the Pharisees and their hypocritical use of fasting, that they would put on a gloomy face right. and even believe that they would mix up a type of makeup out of ashes and cover their face with it so that people would know that they were fasting. And... Um, one of the most frightening things that Jesus says in the entire Bible, he says regarding them, they will have their reward in full. Yeah, an interesting thing, be, Brother yeah. Paul, is that in Lebanon, during Ramadan, uh, when we were there, one thing that they would do with each other is stick out their tongue to see if they were fasting or not. And if their tongue was coated with the, the white uh, buildup and they were fasting, if their tongue was clean, they knew they had broken the fast. And they, that was a big deal that they, they were checking each other to see who was and who was not fasting. And it was, you know, of course, if you weren't fasting, then uh, you, you were looked down upon. All right, and that just shows us not only the hypocrisy, but the absurdity of religion that is not biblical and without God. Right. And um, so we have to be very, very careful there that we do all things for the glory of God and for the good of others. Amen. Now, when we come to fasting, there's... People always ask me this question, well, what is fasting about, and how do you know when to fast, and why do you fast? Well, first of all, you have to have a correct theology with regard to the sovereignty of God and his lordship over the world. Fasting is not a means of manipulating deity. Good point. We do not have this old pietistic idea that I'm going to somehow gain favor with God by making myself suffer. Christians suffer. A man who truly walks with God and practices godliness will suffer in this fallen world, but we're never to, uh, it's never to be a self-inflicted suffering. And so fasting has no purpose such as that. The best way I can describe pa uh, fasting and the cause of it is this. It's all about one passion driving out another passion. Let me give you an example. Let's say that um, that I have desired for three years to go on a vacation with my wife and uh, we've saved up we've talked about it just every day it's an issue we've marked off the days on the calendar and after three years I'm walking out the door fully excited about this wonderful passion that is going to be fulfilled I'm going to go on a vacation with my wife right then as I'm getting ready to get in the car my little boy Ian comes running up to me and grabs his head and says daddy daddy my head and he falls over on the sidewalk. Now, at that moment, if I'm going to stomp my foot and say, oh, man, three years now and I can't go on my vacation. Mm. No. What's going to happen? I have totally forgotten about the vacation. 
I could care less. As a matter of fact, if someone were to mention to me that I've lost my vacation, I would look at them as though they were a monster. Why? The passion that I have for my son and his need has driven out every thought of every other passion. That is fasting. Why do we fast? Listen, you can, you can really fall into a legalism on fasting. You can fall into so many errors, but if you'll just hold what I'm saying regarding passion, it will guard you. And it's this. Let's say that I, I have a loved one who is lost, and it seems that every time I preach the gospel, it's a closed door. I, I'm disturbed about it. God has laid an, uh, his own burden on my heart about this person. And I may come to the point where I say, it's not that, all right, I'm going to fast two days in order to earn this person's salvation. No, it's, I am so concerned about this person, food is no longer an issue in my life. I don't care. It's, it's about thinking about the nations where the gospel is not preached. Now, we have to be careful here. Why? Because we have to trust in the sovereignty of God or we'd lose our mind. That's right. I mean, there's so many needs out there. But I believe that God can lay burdens on his people to such an extent that their heart is right, that they'll say, it's not that I'm giving up food to to earn something. It's just that this passion is so strong in my heart that even the mention of food seems almost wrong. And so the people who can truly fast are people who truly have a passion for God in the advancement of his kingdom. Wow. When we look at it that way, then it doesn't turn into legalism. Dr. Edney, that's a wonderful perspective, isn't it? It is. And, and one, one issue that I have considered during the fast is, you know, when you get a hunger pain, then that's another prompting for prayer and, and to focus on God and to drive out that issue of hunger. Because, I mean, hunger is not going to supernaturally go away just because we're fasting. But we, we can use those bodily feelings to help us focus more on our Lord. You know, that is, that is so true. As a matter of fact, when every once in a while, uh, it seems like the Holy Spirit will just bring something to mind that maybe uh, we're off in an area. And with me, sometimes it's being so busy that, well, I'm not practicing the presence of God. And um, I will fast sometimes on those days. Why? For that very reason that the doctor said. When I set aside uh, or separate myself from food, which also means fellowship in our country, uh, every time there's a twinge, every time there's a weakness, I don't know what it is, I can't explain it, but it throws my mind right back into the presence of God. There are so many different reasons in Scripture for fasting, but that is one of, I could say, my favorites. One of the reasons uh, for fasting in my life is that. Another reason for fasting that people often overlook is preparation and growth in godliness in the sense of seeing yourself as you really are. L let me just give you an example. Let's say that you bump into a Christian uh, in your workplace or something and you say hi and they're real quick and irritable with you and maybe even a little offensive and they kind of storm down the, the hallway and then in a couple hours later they come back and they say, you know, Listen, Mike, uh, I'm, I'm not feeling good today. I've got a lot of problems. I've got headaches. I'm just not myself today. Well, actually, it's just the opposite. They are being their self when they do that. You see, when we have food and comfort and clothing and everything is going right, we're not seeing a real picture of ourselves. We're seeing a person propped up by all the good things in their life. All right. Now, you take all those things away, and that person becomes irritable, short-tempered, uh, self-centered, everything. They're, that's the real them. So when we fast, what is a wonderful opportunity in fasting, especially if you're a person who doesn't eat right, because if you don't eat right as a practice of life, then when you fast, it's not starvation, but it's toxins coming out of your body. Good point. Mike, it's time, time for a break. Yeah, let's okay. take a quick break. 888-253-9254. Brother Paul Washer here with us with Dr. Edney and I, and we're going to take a break. We'll be right, be right back. Stay there.
May you never need us, but if you do, take comfort in knowing we're here for you and your family, too. We're Promise Specialty Hospital. When your physician determines that you need specialized care for life's most serious illnesses and injuries, you can feel confident knowing that Promise Specialty is nearby. Our acute long-term care is designed to maximize and hasten your recovery from complex conditions. We work closely with your physician to maximize your recovery. Ask your physician to call our admissions team at 601-619-2542. We're here for you and your family. Promise Specialty Hospital. We know it's important to you and your family to trust the health care professionals you invite into your home. And we want you to know that you have a choice. If your doctor orders home health care, ask for Emeticis Home Health Care of Vicksburg. You'll receive the quality, patient-focused home health care you need and deserve. Emeticis Home Health Care of Vicksburg. Home health care with a hometown touch. For more information, call 619 619- Three six seven zero. Eight eight two five three nine two five four. Doctor Dan at OnCallRadio.net. You're listening to On Call with Doctor Dan Edney, and our guest today, as we're talking about fasting, our guest here. In our studio here at Muscle Shoals, Alabama, the First Baptist Church, is Brother Paul Washer. And um, Dr. Edney, do you have a question you want to do, uh, start off with in this segment? Uh, well, the, um, the biggest thing that I wanted to ask Brother Paul was uh, what, what direction do we have from Scripture in terms of exactly how to accomplish a biblical fast? Good question. Well, as you know, there, there isn't a whole lot in Scripture regarding that. Um, the main focus in Scripture, you know, I, I noticed that you were discussing about is it wrong to take medicine while you're fasting and things. And, and the answer, of course, is no, it's not wrong because that's missing the entire point. All right. The entire point is going back to just this. I have a hunger for God or for the advancement of God's will that is so great it drives out every other hunger. Now, when it's only kind of the, the Pharisee who starts in on talking about technicalities to that. It is a person who pushes the plate away, maybe uh, pushes even fellowship away and everything just to be alone with God and to deal and wrestle with issues. Now, in my own life, um, I have found th- the following things. Number one, um, I don't really need to be thinking a whole lot about fasting unless I get my eating, the, the way I eat, uh, biblical. I need to be very careful about that. I need to, to realize that food is to be enjoyed, uh, that no food is to be rejected, that uh, if it is received uh, with gratitude, as Paul, as Paul tells Timothy in 1 Timothy 4. We've done programs four. about that before yeah. as well. And so, but at the same time, it... Fasting, flow, fasting is like knowing God's will. Knowing God's will flows out of a lifestyle of renewing the mind in the Word of God. Fasting flows out of a lifestyle of prayer. And um, the preparation of it, if, if I feel like I'm going to go into a, uh, a long time of fasting, you know, let's say more than a week, be very, very careful with regard to the amount of water I drink, I want to drink a lot of water. I want to be very careful prior to that time that uh, I eat carefully. Um, I like to try to eat a lot of vegetables and things like that. After coming out of a fast, you have totally missed the point of coming out of that fast. You run to McDonald's. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and just commit gluttony. But um, there's really not a whole lot on, on exactly how to do it. We see cases where... Um, here the, the Jews are about ready to be destroyed uh, by the evil Haman and um, we see just an immediate there's not much time for preparation it's just tell the people to fast and, and the crisis is so great I can just see the Jewish people all over the place just falling to their knees and falling to their faces and, and fasting and um, we see in cases of Christ just simply going out into the desert being impelled by the Spirit to go out we don't see a whole lot of Preparation. One of the reasons is his lifestyle was biblical. His lifestyle was was biblical. Let me ask you this: uh-huh. When you're fasting, do I know people have different uh, different ways of fasting? Perhaps I mean, do you 
take God's Word, of course. Do you take a journal and write down things uh, that you're praying about? And at what point do you know that it's the time, the point to end the fast? Well, for me, um, sometimes I fast and it is I separate some days in which I'm not going to be at the church building. I'm not going to answer the phone. I'm going to be in the Word or I'm going to be praying. That's fine. That doesn't happen much. So uh, sometimes when I know that I'm going to have a very busy day, I will fast so that during all those busy activities, as the doctor said, you know, when that twinge comes, it sets my mind back on what I'm really supposed to I be love doing. that point, too. That was a great and, point, and Dr. Eddie. And so, you know, you have to be very, very careful. You've got all these people making all these inferences from Scripture about how you're supposed to fast when they're inferences, human inferences, and not commands. Very good. It goes back to just a man who says a passionate. And, and uh, how do I know when I need to stop? This is going to sound pretty secular and trite, but basically it's when I want to stop. Okay. When I feel like it's enough. When, you know, again, I'm not trying to earn something from deity. This is about my passion. This right. is about uh, I feel like it's settled. I have, I have comfort now. I, I peace, feel perhaps? like I have peace, and okay. it's, it's time to go on. And, and here's, I want to make a distinction between, uh, I don't really want to say it this way, but an Old Testament fasting that we see in a New Testament fasting. Realize this. When we're fasting, this is not a morbid thing. We are fasting in the presence of Christ. Mm-hmm. How can you not delight? I learned this a long time ago from a fellow in Peru. He said, your fasting is so morbid, it's a work. He goes, it's not a delight. And I began to look at that. And, I, mm. you know, I'm separating from food, and it's not to starve. I'm separating from food because there's something better, and it's Christ. And, and how can it be morbid if it's bringing me into a closer fellowship with him? So you're fasting. There should be a sense of joy in it. Dr. Edney? Uh, I mean, that's, that's wonderful insight for me. And, uh, Brother Paul, I know that we're, we're taught by Scripture that we're not to make a, any big deal about us fasting, and we're... It just we're not to use the example of the Pharisees, and we're basically just to do it and let it be between ourselves and the Lord. But, you know, sometimes there are others that, that need to know what we're doing, like our wife. Um, you know, so maybe she's not preparing meals or um, or whoever. That, is, that, is that a problem? It's not a problem at all. It's a condition of the heart. Let me give you an example from from giving. You know, we need to give so that uh, one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing. Right. But sometimes I'll come across a young preacher. He's struggling. He has almost nothing. Now, I could secretly pass him, you know, $20 or something, and, and that would be good. But you know what I do sometimes? I'll walk up to him, and I'll hand them a check, or I'll hand them some money, and I'll say, this is for me. And I want you to know that because I want you to know as an older preacher, I esteem what God's doing in your life and I affirm it. So see, it's the condition of the heart. It's not a thing of, because you can practice the hiddenness thing in the name of idolatry. Right, and that's a good so point. It, it's just, you know, what is the point here? Is it the glory of God and the benefit of others or is it self-exaltation? And I guess if, you know, sharing with those who are closest to you, then they can support us in prayer as we go through the fast. My little boys are five and three, and sometimes when Daddy has to separate himself from everything and go out and pray, they've asked their mother, "What's Daddy doing? What what a you know? I hope that my little boys will wake up at three in the morning sometime, wanting a glass of water, and go by my study and see me on my knees weeping." Wow. So it, it it's hiddenness, but it, you know you have to be careful about that too. It's, again, are you desiring God's glory and the advancement of His kingdom or your own exaltation? And I think, Dr. Eddie, that takes us back to uh, a word that Brother Paul used earlier, which reminded me of some things, some teachings and and messages I've heard from John Piper, and that's the use of the word passion. Absolutely. And that that brings a whole different perspective to the whole point of fasting, and that is great encouragement. Well, Brother Paul, we're about out of time in this segment. We thank you so much. It's it's ultimately, of course, been a, a joy and an honor to meet you finally. Amen. And and so spend some time with you. But we uh, really appreciate you coming on the on call program today. And uh, we just uh, we pray God's continued blessings on your ministry. And we thank you for your faithfulness. Can I say one other thing? Sure, real quick? please do. T. W. Hunt, a longtime prayer warrior, told mm-hmm. me this one time. Someone asked him, "How much did Jesus eat?" 
And this is what he said. Jesus ate and he ate and he ate until one more bite would have been gluttony. So in Christ, we have the perfect example. Amen. That's perfect. great. <laughs> that is great. Absolutely. Well, thank you again so much, Brother Paul. Let's go ahead and take a break, Stephen. You're listening to the On Call program, 888-253-9254. Dr. Dan at OnCallRadio.net. We'll be right back after this. Stay there. 